Hello lovely people, today I am back with another book haul. <laughs> I have been absolutely storming through books this year. I just thought I would go through some of my most recent book acquisitions because I'm very excited about a lot of them and I thought you might be too. I'll go through fiction first, then non-fiction, and then a couple of ebooks that I've picked up recently. I'm going to start with a book that I've already mentioned in a video before. This is uh, A Hero Born by Jin Young, which is translated from the Chinese by Anna Holmwood. This is the first book in the Legends of Condor Heroes series. I am currently reading this for the Asian Readathon, which is why I've already mentioned it in a video. I know that this is a very classic piece of um, Chinese fantasy. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying the um, martial arts element to it. My full thoughts will follow in my Asian Readathon wrap-up video. The next book I want to mention is A Middle Grade. I picked up The Mermaid, The Witch and the Sea by Maggie Takuda Hall. I think this has such a pretty cover, but that's not the only reason why I bought it. I bought it because I love seafaring mermaid adventures. This follows pirate Florian who has always done what it takes to survive. This includes working on ships with some not so good reputations. Also on this ship that they're on is Evelyn who is a lady and essentially my understanding is that the crew members of these ships are going to turn out to not be as trustworthy as they seem, they're going to turn on them and then they're going to have some kind of adventure. To be honest with you I largely picked this up because one of my favourite um, independent bookshops to buy from is Queer Lit in Manchester. They had a discount sale on. No Knowing that this was like pirates, mermaids, seafaring, and it's queer in some way was kind of enough for me to want to give it a go. There's quite a few queer books in this haul, I should just say now. Another one of these is Melt My Heart by Bethany Rutter. This is a YA romance. What I know about this is that um, the main character is fat and bisexual, and I know that this is sort of a summertime romance between this boy that she is interested in, but then also maybe she has feelings for her best friend that she's never really noticed before. I think this is going to be just like a really sweet little YA summer romance and I'm kind of going to save it for the summertime so I can read it in like an appropriate setting. Another YA book is Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. You probably don't need me to give you a plot description of this because booktube has been loving it. I pre-ordered the paperback because I knew it was coming with these beautiful sprayed edges. Um, I wanted to read it anyway, but sprayed edges are always a way to get me to actually buy a book. What I know about this is that um, Felix is a trans student and uh, one day at his school an anonymous person posts pictures of him pre-transition and dead names him and so Felix sets out to seek revenge through catfishing this person. What I've heard from this um, that a lot of people liked is that this is one of those kind of like messy books where there are people making questionable decisions but that's done in a way that feels very real and I'm really interested in that. I don't always need my protagonists to be like wholly morally pure, like there are ethics involved in deciding to catfish people but um, I'm interested to see how it is handled. I'm interested to sort of just like read this um, characters experience of sort of like finding themselves and discovering themselves and that kind of thing. So another one that I'm very excited for. Moving on to some adult fiction, I also picked up Dracul by J.D. Barker and Dacha Stoker. Um, I've been so excited to read this one. I first heard about it on uh, Olivia Savannah at Olivia Catastrophe's channel. Um, I have been enjoying reading Dracula and vampire themed things as we know. Um, this one is interesting because Dacha Stoker is a descendant of Bram Stoker who wrote Dracula and this is sort of inspired by experiences that Bram Stoker had. Essentially the back tells me that the like there were these missing a hundred first pages of the original Dracula book um, and so this is inspired by notebooks and stuff that Bram Stoker left behind and then these two have worked together to sort of been a tale about like maybe what could have happened. I think it sounds so interesting. I've been really enjoying these books that have sort of been engaging with the tradition of Dracula. And then also I like that this cover opens up. <laughs> it's like a little window. I like a good novelty. Um, so yeah, I'm super intrigued about this one. Hopefully another fantastic gothic vampire novel to read. Um, I also picked up A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent by Marie Brennan. I've heard a lot of good things about this. I think this is on my radar because of Jean at um, Jean's Bookish Thoughts. 
Um, essentially, I love a good dragon. This is kind of like positing it through like a sort of like scientific kind of lens, which is really intriguing. So like the main character of this Lady Trent is like the world's preeminent dragon scholar. This is kind of following the story of her like seeking out all of this information about dragons, but also like having her own adventure. So it says on the back here at last in her own words is the true story of a pioneering spirit who risked her reputation, her prospects and her fragile flesh to satisfy her scientific curiosity. I think this is going to be really interesting. I hope that it's going to be one that is written in a potentially interesting style as well. I kind of enjoy these books that are like dragons but done in like a slightly different tone than like the typical fantasy tone you might think of. Like for example, Tooth and Claw by Joe Walton which was like Regency era dragons and then this one which is like naturalism with dragons. That's just like super duper interesting to me. Another one that I'm really intrigued by is uh, when the dragon when the, when the dragons leave when the whales leave <laughs> by Yuri Rutku which is translated from the Russian by Elena Yasbin Chavas essentially I was interested in this because this author is from the Chukchi people who are one of the minority peoples who live in northern Russia and he's wildly con widely considered to be like the father of Chukchi literature that's a place that I've never read anything from so I was really intrigued the back describes this as um, now cannot remember a time when she was not one with the world around her, until one day she encounters another human, Rue, a whale who has changed form out of his great love for her. Together these first people become parents to two whales, and then to mankind. Even after Rue dies, now continues on, sharing a story of kinship between the two species. But disaster looms as the old woman's tales are subsumed into myth, and her descendants grow disdainful of their origins. So I know that this is a retelling of the origin of the Chukchi people. It's also sort of serving as like a parable for the destructive force of human arrogance. Um, it sounds really interesting, and I'm really interested in reading more books that are from places that I've just never read literature from before. So I'm really intrigued by this one, and I hope it's going to be a very interesting reading experience. Um, the next two books are by the same author, because I'm having a bit of a moment. This is uh, Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. I'm, you may know that I already mentioned this in a previous haul because I bought it on my Kindle. I read it, I really liked it, I wanted to own a copy of this because I have a couple of people that I would like to lend this to. It's kind of a Regency era um, fantasy of magic and sorcerers and stuff like this. This is compared a lot to Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell and I see the reason for it and I do think there is like a validity in regards to like the time period it's set in and the type of magic and that sort of thing. Um, I do think if you go in expecting that you might not have the best reading experience because it's doing its own thing very much so. We're following Zacharias who is the first black sorcerer royal and he's facing a lot of discrimination as a result and then also orphan Prunella who has a magical gift but women in this society are not expected to um, use their magic if they are of a certain level of breeding. It's very much like a critical look at like what it might be like to exist as sort of like a minority in this particular time as well as interweaving it with all this magic and fae and stuff like this. I had a really fun time reading this book. I really enjoyed it, so I wanted to buy myself a copy. And then I also bought another Zen Cho book, um, The Order of Pure Moon Reflected in Water. This is another book that falls within the like Usha genre. I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous. And at this point, Zen Cho is an author who dabbles across a whole bunch of different like genres and ideas and I just think that everything she writes seems so interesting that I, I really want to just explore her and kind of just read everything she's written. Uh, so this is where I'm going to go next, having read and enjoyed this one, although I do also have the sequel to this on my Kindle and I will be reading that as well. <laughs> yes. All I really know about this is a bandit walks into a coffee house and it all goes downhill from there. And I was like, that's good, that sounds great. And then I also know that it's like a found family story which combines the vibrancy of old school martial arts movies with characters drawn from the margins of history. And once again I was like, I am here for it. So I think Zen Cho might be popping up in a few more book hauls as time goes on, but I've been thoroughly enjoying her. I have four non-fiction books as well that I wanted to briefly talk about. The first one is Sister, an anthology of writing by and about same gender loving women of African Caribbean descent with a UK connection. One of the editors of this is Lady Phil and I know her because of reading the book of Queer Prophets. I really enjoyed her contribution to that. So she is sort of a, an activist and a figure that I have been wanting to sort of um, be more familiar with and read more of her writings so I thought reading a collection that she has edited would be a great way to do that and also to introduce me to a whole bunch of new people. But to the best of my understanding this is sort of a combination of different types of writing. There's poetry in here, there's like essays in here, there's like short stories in here and they're sort of all exploring like 
um, the writer's identities in some way. I'm not always the biggest anthology person when it comes to like short stories because I find short story collections can be a bit hit and miss for me. But my exception is that I love reading queer anthologies because I love getting those glimpses of like a whole myriad of different life experiences that are kind of like live under some kind of umbrella together but show you the similarities between stories and the differences that we have and just like explore the complexity of identity and that's a great way to sort of introduce yourself to new people whose work you might want to pursue further so I'm really interested to get to this soon. Another sort of like collection is In the Kitchen, Essays on Food and Life. This is a selection of food writing. To be honest with you this was on my radar because Ruby Tando is a contributor to this and she is one of my favourite food writers. She has a cookbook coming out later this year that I will be definitely getting my hands on. I really loved her book Eat Up. But also uh, Ella Risbridger who is another food writer who I really enjoy and a whole bunch of food writers that I've never read anything by and once again I love food writing and I really want to read more food writing and become more familiar with more food writers so I thought that this would be a really great way to introduce me to some more as well as sort of giving me a couple of pieces by people that I know that I already am a big fan of. Next up is Gossip from the Forest, The Tangled Roots of Our Forests and Fairy Tales by Sarah Maitland. Um, this is a piece of nature writing that is examining the links between sort of like forests and fairy tales. I'm interested in both of those topics. Um, I also think that this cover is quite interesting with all of the tangled lines and everything. Yeah, so I'm just really interested to sort of get like a better sense of how these fairy tales are, I assume, like rooted in ancient landscapes and kind of that sort of idea. The final non-fiction book I will mention is uh, Empress Dowager uh, Chichi by uh, Yung Chang. Uh, I really enjoyed Wild Swans, which is by the same author, which was sort of like a, a autobiographical look through generations of her family. This is looking at this particular Chinese empress. I don't know anything about her, but I, I enjoyed how Wild Swans was written as well as what we were being told. So again, I'm trying to, when I like authors, explore more of their works rather than being a little magpie and only reading like one book and being like, I really liked that, and then never reading anything by that author ever again. Finally, I just wanted to mention a handful of ebooks that I also bought recently. The first one of those is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is set in Ellingham Academy. I think it might be a dark academia style book. All I know is that um, shortly after this academy opened, the wife and daughter of the founder were kidnapped and the only clue was a mocking riddle listing, listing methods of murder signed with the frightening pseudonym Truly Devious. So it's one of these unsolved crimes and our main character is like setting out to solve it. This is the first book of a trilogy so I'm imagining that it's going to be quite a complex crime if it's presumably going to span three books, but I feel like I've heard really good things about it. Every now and then I like to do a little mystery, so we're going to try it and see. The next one is Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang. For some reason I cannot say the title of that book, I stumble over it every time. This one is set in New York City in 1899. Tilly Pembroke's sister lies dead with two bite marks on her neck. Dracula has recently been published and so Tilly's mind obviously leads to could it be a vampire? She seems to be someone who is very like analytical and research based so she like throws herself into researching could vampires be real? Unfortunately Tilly is also addicted to opium so I think this is going to be this element of um, diving into this research to try and figure out what's happened to her sister but then also sort of losing herself slightly in this addiction that she has and then raising this question of are vampires real, could it be um, her being affected by the drugs that she's taking, what's going on. Again, I love me a novel that is having a dialogue with Dracula, don't I? How could I resist? The next one is uh, Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain is one of those people who is so big in the food world. I have seen some of his um, documentaries, I've seen like a handful of episodes. Um, this is his book that is sort of like exposing the reality behind like being a chef. Um, it's described as um, 25 years of sex, drugs, bad behaviour and hot cuisine. So I think that that sounds interesting and a slightly different take on food writing than any other food writing I've done before. So again, thought I'd pick it up and give it a go. Um, and then finally is New Sun's Original Speculative Fiction by People of Colour. This is sort of just uh, showcasing a whole bunch of writers who write within uh, fiction, fantasy, horror as sort of genres. Again, 
I know I keep saying that I'm not really great on short story collections, but I do quite like a good collection that introduces me to like new authors and stuff that I might want to pursue. I think what I've identified is that I just have to pick collections that are better suited to what I'm looking for and what I'm interested in pursuing. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that this one will be full of a lot of exciting new writers that again can go forth, can explore. That's everything I wanted to talk about. Bit of a beast, I know. I would really love to hear if you have read any of these. I would genuinely love to hear your thoughts on them. Or if you have anything based on these topics that... I think it's clear that there are a couple of topics that I'm like, interested in exploring at the moment. If you have any other book recommendations based on those, I would really love to hear them. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you're having a really lovely day. I will see you next time for something different.